Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today we're talking silver foxes. <laughs> The silver fox is a melanistic form of red fox, and if bred back to a red partner, will revert back to producing red offspring. Sadly, the silver fox coat has become revered by the fur trade and fur farms all over Europe, Russia and the world. These foxes live in cramped conditions, attacking one another with horrific injuries, living in disease and depression with no vet care in order to keep costs to a minimum. And all four, a fur coat. Is it worth it, I ask you? In character there is no difference to the red fox, but genetics from fur farms can be traced back to the USA. I'm here today with fox rescuer Angie Patterson, who has two very beautiful rescued silver foxes. Oh, come on. Oh, look. Oh, so who's this? That one is Darla, and that is Angel. Hey, Angel. You must remember Angel. Yes. Oh, are they grows. gorgeous? They're yeah. quite large, aren't they? Yeah. They're actually bigger than what you would, would think they are. It's coat. They? It really is coat. Oh, hey. Can I touch you? <laughs> oh, they're so fun though, aren't they? Come on. Oh, yes. Some people are obviously going to be thinking about having one of these as a pet. What is your opinion on having a fox as a no, pet? No, no, no. You have to be a special kind of person. You have to give up your holidays. Nobody will sit for you like you can put them in a kennel. There's nothing like that. Um, they have their own ways. They like to do what they want to do. And they go through the crazes at um, about six months old when they suddenly turn to be evil teenagers. <laughs> So what do they do at six months old? Oh, they particular? rip everything up and, you know, they don't care. They'll bite you. And then, of course, everybody wants to get rid of them because they think that's it. They've turned really um, horrible. Yeah. And, of course, it's just the thing that they're going through. Yeah. You know, so if, if I was to have one of these foxes in my house, what would it do to my house? <laughs> well... <laughs> you laugh. So it's obviously going to be interesting. You wouldn't have any electric cables left. They would strip the electric cables out. They're very good at uh, working out things. They pull your curtains down. They would rip your couch. They would do everything. Right. They really are not for the average pet. And, and, and if I have one of these in my house, would mm -hmm. it be clean or would it be marking everywhere? Like it depends. If you have one, they often use a litter tray. Okay. But not always. Um, right. But because, of course, you know, Fox poo smells. I mean, I know that because my dogs roll in it all the time mm, and it's mm. greasy and it's smelly. Mm. Will they do that around your house? Will, your, will um, your house smell like that? Well, it would, but of course I don't have mine because I want them to be foxes as well as they can be. Yes. You know? I want them to live their natural. Um, I know it's not natural in an enclosure, but they're, they're not used to being, yeah. you know, okay. free. If somebody has a rescued fox, mm. what should they do? they should contact National Fox Welfare Society. Okay, and the National Fox Welfare Society, what, what's their contact details? Um, it's actually on the website, so okay. if they go on there, they could find it. Brilliant, well, they're lovely. Thank you so much for showing them to me today. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, if you loved this episode, please subscribe to my channel and also check out Fox Angels. What's the website, Angie? www.foxangels.org <laughs>There are many charities fighting to end the fur trade, fox being only one of the many animals exploited for their coat. Humane Society International fight hard to end the trade, so does PETA, the Anti-Fur Society and Respect for Animals. You can find their websites below.